and today I want to talk to you about a pesky little topic called authentication. It's one of those things that you're going to need to add to your React app, whether you're using Create React app, Next.js, Gatsby, or any of the other frameworks that you like, you are going to need to add authentication at some point. It sounds pretty easy in theory, right? You need some way of saving who the user is. You need to check with the server whether they are the person they say they are. You need to potentially save their password, maybe their username, and you got to do some little, you know, it's pretty easy. Talk to the server. Hey, is this person logged in? I have these credentials. The, uh, the server saves them and then things kind of just work out. That's how, that's how it usually works. But good authentication is where things get really tricky because with good authentication, you have to deal with things like security. You have to deal with authorization, whether this person, even if you know that this person is this person, do they have access to this page or do they have access to that page? Are they an admin? Are they a user? Are they a meta admin? Whatever else you might want to think of. Authorization is really the hard part of a lot of authentication, where authentication is who are you? Authorization is now that I know who you are, do you have access to a particular topic or a particular resource? That's That gets tricky. And then when it comes to saving all of this stuff on the server, it gets even trickier because, well, what if your, what if your database gets leaked? leaked? Can people read your passwords or can they not read your passwords? How is your hashing structure? Are you still using hashing from many, many years ago or are you using a modern salt and encryption and whatever. Honestly, it's really hard to even keep up with what you should be doing, how you should be doing it. And then when it comes to saving the authentication state on the front end, because the front end needs to be like, Hey, I know you're already logged in and I know who you are. So I need to tell the server to check with the server, whether this is still true. Do you save that in cookies? Do you save it in local storage? There's a lot of tricky little things that come with that. One of the big ones is that once you split your app into multiple apps, you're going to want to have an authentication service or some sort of authentication provider that can work with multiple services. Like if I log in on iOS, do I want to still be logged in in the browser? If I switch browsers, do I still want to be logged in? Usually as a user, I do, but you as an app developer get into a tricky situation where you have to have API based authentication. You can't just be passing cookies around because you need to have, you probably want to use the same authentication for multiple different clients, whether they're a server trying to do something in the name of your user, whether it's the web app trying to do something in the name of the web app, all of that gets really tricky. So people start building authentication services and they start trying to think about how to do tokens. When you really get, start reading about it, it kind of blows your mind. I honestly, you just should never roll your own authentication. You should rely on a service that already provides authentication because there's a lot of little tricky things that you get, you can get wrong and you don't want to end up like Equifax, which leaked something like many, many million, hundred million of users. You don't want to be the person who everyone laughs at for, oh, wow, they rolled their own authentication, lost everybody's data. And now you can just go to the dark parts of the internet and get everybody's social security numbers because Equifax had a breach. Oops. You don't want to roll your own authentication. You want to use somebody who already exists, who's out there and whose core business model it is to make it easy for you to add authentication and authorization and user management and all that fun stuff to your app. So you have a lot of different options. You have Auth0 as one of them. You have Netlify Identity as a simple solution. There's AWS Cognito, which is kind of tricky to set up. You have Firebase authentication, and there's probably a bunch of others. You can build your own that follows the same protocols, but unless you have a team of experts on authentication, authorization, encryption, JWT tokens, and really you have time to do this, and it's your core business model, you should probably just use somebody else. Once you start using somebody's uh, authentication provider, this stuff still is kind of tricky to use. Um, especially on the Jamstack or on the browser, you need to, you have this weird authentication flow where the user clicks a button, gets redirected to somebody else's authentication page. And you want that page to be somebody else's because that guarantees security and makes sure that you as the application developer aren't sniffing people's passwords and usernames, which you don't want to do. 
well, you might want to do it, but you shouldn't want to do that. So you redirect them to a different page. They log in, they authenticate, and then that page redirects them back to your page. And you have something called a callback page, which then processes the, the authentication, looks at the looks at a bunch of data in the uh, in the URL, sends it back to the API for, for your authentication provider, says, hey, is this data correct? Did you send me this or is somebody trying to hack this poor person? And the authentication provider says, yes, that is okay. And you have to then put it into your global state. You have to make sure that every component that needs to check, hey, is this person currently logged in? Should they be seeing this authenticated token? content? Should they be seeing this authorized content? And there's a lot of little tricky things that you still have to do, even though you're using somebody's authentication provider. And most of these have to do with global state management and making sure that you have the right access and the right info any, everywhere. So what I started building about a year ago and has now just reached version one, yay! I built this hook called use auth, which makes it really easy for you to add authentication and authorization using various different authentication providers anywhere in your React app. It works with Next.js, it works with Gatsby, I've tried it with Create React App. Rather than have you trust me at my word that this code snippet is the best thing since sliced bread when it comes to adding authentication to your React app, I'm going to show you. We're going to do three minutes and we'll have authentication added to a completely blank Gatsby app. I started it with the Gatsby default starter. I installed a couple of dependencies and now we're going to add authentication. We're going to start by con creating a config auth React component that renders on every page load. If you're not familiar with Gatsby, going into Gatsby browser, adding a React, uh, a React component there helps you add something to every page and ensure that it's always rendering. We don't need to wrap it in anything because we're using X state behind the scenes. So there's no context provider or anything like that, that you need with use auth. Everything is completely independent. We're going to take the dispatch function from use, use auth. This is a helper that's returned from the use auth component, uh, that's returned from the use auth hook so that you can send events to the X state machinery behind the scenes. We don't need to render anything because again, this is not a wrapper and we're going to have an effect that runs or on every initial page load, but does not run on subsequent re-renders. Um, re we're going to dispatch a set config event. We're going to give it an auth provider that comes from providers.netlify identity, which also needs to have access to our dispatch just so that it can do stuff on in the backend or behind the scenes, we're going to send use auth our navigate function. This is so that it can work with any routing solution that you want to use. You can always uh, use use auth regardless of what you're set up, as long as you give it the whatever function it needs to call to navigate because it needs to change between pages sometimes. And just to be sure, we're going to give it a callback domain, even though Netlify identity doesn't actually need that. Uh, we've got authentication configured. Now to show that it's actually working, we're going to go into index.js and we're going to create a login, um, a login component, which doesn't need to get any props. It's going to take is authenticated. Authenticated is a method that comes from use auth and tells us whether the user is currently authenticated. If the user is authenticated, we're going to return a logout button, button which on click calls logout, which comes from use auth, logout. And we're going to say that we are currently logging out. Else, we're going to return a button that on click calls the login function, login, and we say login. So now a button should show up here. Let's see if it does. Oh, we need to actually render it, duh. So we're going to render the login button here. We now get a button. And when I click this, the Netlify identity should pop up and ask me whether I want to log into this page. In theory, that should work, but it's not. Five minutes later. I don't know what I did wrong because it now works without me changing anything. Computers, right? So I click login. 
and it asks me for the Netlify URL that I'm using for your for Netlify identity. I'm gonna copy it so that I don't typo anything. And set site sites URL. I can now log in as myself, and I am logged in. See the the button changes to log out. I'm still me. If I reload the page, UseAuth looks at the local storage and makes sure that it checks the when when my session is expiring and preemptively puts me in the logged in state before it talks to the auth provider and verifies that that is still true. What I can also do here is instead of just saying hi people, I can say hello to myself. So we're going to return this layout stuff and I'm going to const uh, user equals use auth. Again, everything, everything connects to the data in the background without me having to really think about it. I'm just calling use auth wherever I need something about being uh, being authenticated or about the current user. And if I'm authenticated, I'm going to show user.email. Otherwise, I'm going to say hello people. I need to get is authenticated as well. Let's see. So it now says hi Swizzets, blah, blah, blah. I can log out, puts me back in, log in, and it just works. Now let's say you want to change your authentication provider. You're tired of Netlify identity. You want to use something a little bit more powerful with better administration features or whatever. What does it take right now when you think about your current app? What does it take to switch to a different authentication provider? It's usually a lot of work, right? So what we're going to do now is switch this app to using Auth0 instead, still using use Auth. And yes, those are the only two authentication providers that are currently supported. It's this shit takes time. So let's see. We're going to go back into Gatsby browser. And instead of Netlify identity, we're going to use Auth0 as the provider. We're going to give it the dispatch function. And it's going to need a little bit more configuration because we need to set application keys and stuff like that. I'm going to copy those from my old instructions here. We're going to say we need these two because I don't care if anybody steals these keys. They, are spe they specifically exist so that you can play around. We're going to have to create a new Auth0 callback page as well. This page makes sure that Auth0, when it redirects you back to your app, has somewhere to go. We're going to call it Auth0 callback.js, put it in source.pages. And yes, I'm copy pasting from my old code because you don't want to watch me type all of this. It's basically taking the handle authentication function from use auth and calling it whenever that function changes or the page is loading. Now let's see if this magically starts working. Uh, the domain is required. We gotta make sure, let's wipe local storage so that we're not leaking from the previous auth provider. We're now going to be logged out. I click login and it should redirect us. We add response type and the scope so that Auth0 knows what we're doing. This is what I meant with give, giving you more power than Netlify identity, but also a little bit more responsibility. We click login, go to the Auth0 authentication page. See, this is fully secure. It's on their domain, so I can't steal anything. I'm going to use my existing user. It's going to redirect us back. Yes, I'm authorizing the app to, to be used comes back to the callback page and it should me should redirect me immediately but it is not so i'm going to switch to the old mode because use auth v1 is completely backwards uh, compatible with the previous stuff so we're going to render this auth provider which the auth provider is designed to magically set you up with auth0 so now this is reloading and it's redirecting me back and yay it works so obviously V1 still might have some bugs. By the time you watch this, I will have fixed them. I can log out, it redirects me to the homepage to make sure that everything's fresh. Log in. Yes. See, it works. As promised, we got that working in less than five minutes using both of the providers that are currently supported, Netlify Identity and Auth0. It's uh, use Auth is designed so that you can easily add different providers. I've created a an interface that is sort that seems to be working for multiple providers. So I would like you, because this is open source, you can add new providers. Maybe add your own, add your favorite. There's um, I'm gonna add documentation on how to do that very soon. 
You can go to useauth.dev to learn more about how the, all of this works, to learn more about how to provide, how to add different providers, to read the documentation and start using it in your own app. I'll be hanging out in the chat room if you have any questions. Oh,